this is the Conway Grammar School Committee meeting, and we're here on December 15, 2016. And we're calling to order at 6.06 .06 p.m. And our first order of business is to review and approve the minutes of November 17th. I would take a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. And minutes second. were lovely. I suppose I'll second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Oh, I, I should say any discussion. Oh. No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next Jane, week. If you weren't here, you have to stand. Yeah. Well, I've been told no, I don't. Oh, okay. According to Elaine. So, um, so the next item is a financial statement. So I emailed you all your financial statements, and um, the only thing I have to tell you is that the salaries are all encumbered and we're looking okay. You have nine warrants to sign tonight in the amount of $62,985.56. And there's also payroll warrants for you to sign this evening as well. Okay. Sixty. Thank you. Any further questions on the finance financial statement? Um, do you know uh, how how much is in our uh, capital? I do. I, I uh, got in touch with our town treasurer. <laughs> And right now there is one hundred and eighty-seven thousand six hundred and fifty-four dollars. I assume we're going to be discussing a couple of things with that later, probably. Yep. So uh, later in the meeting, we have Bob Lesko here, who's going to talk to us about a long-term uh, plan for the buildings. Well, was that you? That was who was the one that really got that started, or the idea for the capital fund? And well, I think we all did. That was tremendous. Yeah, that it really was. Good to this, save for the future. That was just really good. We're done. And, and keep on putting money in. Yep. Yep. Okay. Any further questions? Uh, so now we have a public comment. And is there anybody who would like to bring anything up? No. Okay. We have a silent <laughs> public. <laughs> Okay, up for discussion tonight. Uh, the first thing is a school improvement plan. Yeah. Um, oh, here comes Elaine. May I ask that we have Bob Lesko present first? Oh, sure. That's a great idea. Why don't, yeah, why don't we skip that we for now? Hi, Elaine. Hi. You missed the exciting vote on the approval of the minutes. Yeah, so we approved the minutes, we looked over the financial statements, there was no public comment. And um, we're, we're going to skip right to uh, the long range facilities plan with Bob Lesko so that he can get out of here. Thank you for doing that. Come sure, absolutely. I, I, I'm glad you thought of it. I would have, I should have thought of it just because he was taking a nap over there. <laughs> What I've done in all of the schools this year, Lynn asked me to try to make an attempt at uh, a capital plan for all of the schools. I had something in a pretty good in a format that worked okay at uh, Frontier last year. So I've put all of the schools pretty much on that format this year. Um, and I brought a second iteration of it to Frontier. Um, what it, it, it it's a list of projects. I will say that uh, Conway was one of the easier ones to do. Conway's a great little school. It's in really good shape. The envelope project we did fixed a lot of things here. Um, so it's not a very long list. Um, the ones in red are, they're not things that I think the end of the world is going to come if we don't deal with, but they're things that I'd like to see addressed this year. And what, I, what I've done by having the less than one year category and bringing that to every school is kind of demonstrating how quickly, even though yours isn't as large as many of them, how quickly those little projects 
add up. Um, we've got operating budgets in all of the schools that, you know, buy our chemicals and paper products and pay our custodians and that sort of thing. And sometimes it seems like a thousand dollars here or there for stuff um, isn't a lot, but when you add up five or six of those little projects, the money gets, gets up there pretty quick. Um, so the budget you have for capital, if that's something you can use for these kinds of things, it's a really good thing. What I've been kind of saying is that I really see three levels of budget. There's a operating budget, and then there's big capital expenditures kind of things that are really beyond um, the red projects on these lists. Some of the other projects down below will probably at some point rise to a capital project, but there's a lot of mid-range projects that um, I like to call replacement renewal kind of things, but it's not the kind of money you want to put in your operating budget for every year because hopefully you're not always going to have those kinds of expenses. But they are expenses that keep popping up and the things that, uh, that need to be done and taken care of on a regular basis. Um, what I can do, I gave away my, I did. Can I have one, just, the, not, just, this, just this sheet here. Um, what I can do is I'll, I'll go through the ones that I've listed as less than a year and tell you what they are and ask, answer any questions you have on them. And also if you've got any questions on the other things that are on the rest of the list, I'd be glad to talk about those. But basically the first item, the cameras at the front and rear doors, um, that's something I've been asked um, asked for by the school, and it's a little more money than I think ought to come out of the regular operating budget. Um, what it'll do, it'll give them the ability in the office to actually see who's coming in to the front door and the back door. And they're not cameras per se like you have. We have cameras in some of the schools that we're recording what's going on in the corridors and that sort of thing. These cameras are just built into very little tablet-like devices that sit on somebody's desk with a switch so that when someone comes to the back door, um, they can push a buzzer and whoever's at the desk in the front office can actually see their face, talk to them, and buzz them in. Um, we've got those in a couple of schools already and they're working really well. We've got them in the high school. And they Do they record the or just view? Pardon me? Do they record or just they view? They just view. They're not, a, they're not a recording device. Um, very, very different procedure when, um, I, and, and I wouldn't say this precludes later adding cameras that record, but these are just for door entrance and they're, they're very simple, relatively inexpensive. Um, library AC, the, the air conditioning in this room went down late last season and we've yet to replace it. Um, and I would say this has been an air conditioned space and it's a space that probably wants to continue to be air conditioned. So I listed that as an item. Now there has been some discussion and I really didn't address it here, but it's something you can think about is whether there's other spaces he, near here and whether we wanted to put a second unit in here to, to make it a... I, th I think the unit that's in here does a pretty good job, but uh, it's not the greatest distribution with having it way down that end. So we've got the option of replacing it for the money that I've listed here. It would probably cost us close to twice as much to put two units in here. and. I would kind of lean to, I mean, I don't know if you have a sense of the importance, too, of the air conditioner in here is the computers. Yep. And the, and the so so um, most places that I've been at, where we have computers, you know, there's the air conditioner. So I, 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 I think that, that I kind of heard like a, maybe a specific, more specific question, though, that in there that, so it, has there been complaints that one, the one is not adequate? Is there, do you think that there's you know, a need for two? That would be twice the price? And when I, when I came on board, it shut down pretty quickly. So I haven't experienced, I haven't felt it myself. And I, and I, I haven't gotten any feedback other than it's down. And um, Maybe you could ask Sue. Yes, I sure will. 
I do think sure. that two units, I, I know it's double the cost, but the fact that that one's down there with all that heat coming out of the room probably uses all the AC. And if they, we had two separate units, it would, that would it's be circulate. It's, it's not perfect distribution. Um, so, you know, they got along very well with the one unit for quite a few years. Um, but you're going to get a better job if you if you put two in here because you the way you know the, the distance between there and um, you know it's it, if if they had air conditioned this space when it was built they'd have probably ducted it and they'd have had distribution throughout the but we probably saved some money we, I don't think we need two units of that size so we'd probably buy two units that were a little bit smaller so it wouldn't probably be exactly twice this but it's something we're thinking about. Um, when you're getting ready to spend the money. And then I, I threw a small floor machine in there. Um, all, of the, all of the schools are, are getting to a point where, you know, getting new equipment for cleaning and that sort of stuff is important. Um, there are a couple of exterior door frames in this building um, that are in, getting in rough shape. They're rusting a little bit and they're not seeing right. I'm not quite sure what we do to fix them. Um, I put a small amount in there hoping we can get somebody to come in and either weld a piece in or, or you know, work with what's there rather than replace the doors. Um, they're not horrible yet. If we get one done or two done for this money, it'll give us an idea of what we want to do later to do a bunch of them. But it's not an, in fact, again, the door frames in this school are in pretty good condition. We have a problem in all of the schools where with dirt and sand and salt and that stuff coming in on the metal door frames. It's, got, it's not unusual what's happening here. Is the pre-K door one of those? Yes, it's the top one. Yeah. It, it needs a frame fix. Bob, you, you tried to fix it this summer even. Yeah, it, 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 it's pretty, you know, really the, the, the simplest, most inexpensive repair would probably be to, to, to cut it out and weld a new piece in, but I need to find somebody that can do a good job of that. Um, we're getting ready to do one in Sunderland, so we'll probably have some experience and, pra and practice before we get out here. Um, and then the last thing I have is just a chunk of money. Um, to do floor finishes. I mean, we've got a lot of carpet in the school, it's showing some age. Um, we just replaced um, some of the carpet in the, uh, the wing section with, with floor tile. But, you know, s spending $4,000 a year is going to allow us to do a room a year or something. Um, so I'm just asking for a chunk of money to start. So it, it's a, compared to some of the other schools, I believe the money here is a pretty modest request, and the school's in good shape. Um, do you have any questions about any of the any of the things on the uh, on the rest of the sheet? I think that's a, you know, most of those are you know longer range things. Although they're what I'm hoping to do, and I encourage, I really like to get feedback from folks on this. You know, I I came in and had a meeting with the principal and talked with the custodian and took some of the things that I've seen in the school and some of the things that I found from studies that we've had done on the school and, and made up this list. Um, but from my perspective, this is more your list than my list. So anybody that's got comments on it and would like to add or take things away or, or change the timelines that I have on the record. Don't you think if we moved up the hand dryers, we might save money on paper towels sure. and it might pay for itself? Yeah, it, yeah, I, I'm really hoping we start to do hand dryers in a lot of our schools, and I would welcome, you know, getting the money to do that here. The technology for those is pretty good now. I'll, I'd have to do some pricing for you and get an idea of, of what the cost would be. But you know, buying a good hand dryer is not inexpensive, but it's not just a matter of, of conservation with paper products. Paper products are very, very expensive. Right. I think that would be so yeah, worthwhile. I, you know, if, if, if thing to move up. I have start over. Oh, yeah. I agree. I agree with that. That's come up before, and I think it's probably time to get that done. Right. Um, I was thinking about the air conditioning unit. Um, that's going to need to be fixed, maybe before we can get any new money. So I would assume you want it fixed before June. Or so. 
that can, um, I really like that pre-K door fix before, this year too. Yeah. So where can we get that money from? We're running pretty tight right now mm -hmm. in our budget. We, we, we had um, six teachers uh, that were able to do that column with the new contract, that column change. That's the most we had in any school. And we, we've already been here and we took money from the electricity and a couple other accounts to cover that. So uh, until we get to the end of the year, I'm saying it's going to be tight. Mm -hmm. to, to, uh, and it already it sounds like it's going to be a colder winter than last year. So I don't think we'll have as much savings in the fuel as we did, in the heating fuel as we did last year. Uh, but I mean, I can scrub a few lines. Um, but it was, so if we were to do the AC, what would be your pleasure? To do the two units or just to do the one unit? Because he's got 42, but if we were to do two smaller units, it's not going to be maybe, like he said, double the price, but it's going to be more than the 4250. Right. I think we, we would have to talk to somebody that knows how the current one works. I mean, when it's working, is it enough? That, I, don't, I don't think we could answer that question. Yeah, there's no one here who can answer that. Right. My recollection was that this was a comfortable room, but... Yeah, it, um, it, it's probably more of a problem, you know, when it gets really, really, really hot. Um, I think it's comfortable room too. I, I just bring it up um, because if 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 you were designing something and trying to make it the best possible design, you do two units. Yeah, you but, put one over there and one over here. Right. Yeah, but you know, with that said, I've been in this room a lot of times in hot weather, and I don't find it uncomfortable. Does anybody know if we're having any special town meetings? I don't know, but if we'll have any meetings. Have you heard anything this year? Yeah. Oh, I don't like Because if we had a special town meeting, then we could ask for money from the stabilization account to take care of a couple of things. So we have to go back and ask again after they've already given us that money? Stabilization account requires two-thirds vote to pull money out. Oh. I thought that was like our little... It's account. tagged for us, but you still have to have town approval. The way it should be, Patty. They don't the consent them. of the governed. <laughs> Civics 101. Philip, you're voted to represent them. In, no. uh, in answer to Elaine's question, I did run a number, um, and I, I think it was based on a count and a cost as opposed to do all of the, enough hand dryers to serve all of the locations where we do towels. Was forty five hundred dollars. Well, that'd be but, so worth you know, it. any forty five hundred. Pardon me. Only forty five hundred. Yeah. You said yeah, only. There, that seems like there's a There's not that many that would no. go in here, and they're probably a, a really good hand dryer is going to cost us eight or nine hundred dollars installed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and and we can do that incrementally. So yeah, we should definitely do that. I think we have more backups. So that's about eighteen. With one yeah. air yeah. The only other thing, at Bob, we need to add to this, which just uh, literally occurred today. Um, so when I talked to you, I was, is that we now we had one, but now it looks like we have three intercoms not working. Uh, okay. And so we had an unannounced lockdown yeah. today. Yeah, and you know that, and that 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 that's on my list, but yeah. it's a little bit further away. And, and not, yeah, the clocks, the clocks and intercoms are, are right. Not not necessarily replacing the whole just system. Just getting some repairs done. The, yeah, the three because yeah. um, obviously I can bring some. I'll bring somebody. Yeah, you're, you know, again with, with with the age of the system you have and stuff, it, it's always troubling spending money on it because eventually we're going to have to replace it. Right. But we've got somebody that's done pretty good work. They're, they're out of Adams. They did the original installation. I can call them and have them come in and see if we can get a couple of them back running. Are there classrooms that can hear announcements? Yeah, so first it was um, Rick Giffords. Um, and we did put a call into the company, uh, uh, the company that installed, but they're not doing back to us. And then we found out today when we did a, a non-announced lockdown drill um, that Maggie West is, isn't working and another one in the gym wasn't working. Um, so the, the protocol is if there's a lockdown, you would yell to, you know, to everyone, but mm -hmm. Maggie usually teaches with her door closed. And, so, um, and we sort of learned that lesson today. Mm -hmm. But Rick, um, I don't know, one day, 
we were doing, we were doing like turkey bingo. It was kind of fun. And the kids, they, we didn't know until about 10 o'clock that his intercom wasn't working. So they're waiting for the bingo numbers and this and that. And they said, that's sort of fun, but if you have a lockdown in an emergency, mm -hmm. right. that needs to be working. Mm -hmm. Over the holiday break, there's probably, you know, if, if I can get somebody to come out, it'll be that a great time great. to have So I'm sorry. That just no, that's, good. Good. that's good information. So um, I have a thought. Um, we have $20,000 in hardware uh, technology devices, which right now we have about 15006 Do you know how, have you and Scott had yes. a plan to spend that already? We do. Okay. Then forget it. Yeah, we have a <laughs> solid plan. <laughs> then we won't leave, touch that. I, I, I have, have heard mention of a special town meeting, so it's quite possible there'll be one. I don't know when we could ask Tom. So would it be your pleasure that I write a warrant article asking the town to use, um, a, a adding a contingency onto that? Um, I like to add a little bit of a contingency. So we have 18550 So if we asked for $20,000 for projects, um, and at your next, and have them put it on the warrant for the next special town meeting or annual town meeting. I don't want to be the only one that talks here. I like. Um, I think we should also get a price on the clocks and intercoms. That's a safety issue. Yeah. And then with the age they are, they're going to keep broken. You're going to fix three, and three more are going to go. And I, li I like a special town meeting to do something like this, um, but. Only, only because regular town meeting, we'll, we'll, we'll have enough on our plate. But and it's when some of these things we want to do earlier. Right. Yeah. But if there is no special town meeting, then we don't have a choice. Right. Well, can't we have one for this? It's kind of expensive, and they don't generally do it for one purpose, so unless it's an emergency. So, Mr. Lesko, in the couple of the other schools that are asking for a new intercom, uh, clocks and intercom, are we are we budgeting about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for that? Yes, the issue the the it, it, there's an un, rather unusual system in here with the digital clocks and stuff, which I'm I actually had a number here of about ten, um, but I'm not positive about it. I think that was a very rough estimate, and you know we'll we'll have to make. My recommendation would be on the clocks that we go to a regular analog clock that we don't try to maintain, and we can probably hang it over that old um, red digital display thing that, and, and use a more analog clock and, and then have the... So I, I would guess something in that range of, of nine to $12,000 is probably what we're talking. So let's see, but, I like round numbers, so we'll... So we would then ask for 35000 if we added the clocks. Because, I mean, if we don't use the money, it's going to stay in that account. Right. Um, but shouldn't, shouldn't we have um, firmer numbers before we ask? But I mean, here's the problem, Jan. If you We, we have, and Bob go, and I go through this all the time, we have people come out, and when you don't have the money, they don't want to come out and give you a price, and then you say, oh, we can't do the project, we don't have the money. That, that happens all the time to us. So we go with our experience and what we can find on the internet for what we think they're going to be. And then when we get the money, then we go out to bid and we get prices and, and, and go through that. And we've done pretty good. You know, I don't, I, I can't remember one total miss that we've had. We're usually within a small percentage. Oh, I can think of one. Which one? The Waitley generator. <laughs> so this one. That wasn't our fault. <laughs> So if we did it at a special town meeting, then this would be all of the money that we would ask for for this year, so we wouldn't come again in at annual town meeting and ask for more. Would we ask for another deposit, as we normally do? For the stabilization. And yeah. Yes. So that has to be written up, too, because um, there's usually we, we have the paperwork from the town by the end of December to get our warrant articles in. Did you include, uh, sorry, did you include um, the repairs to the exterior door? I did everything. I did the oh. 14,050 plus 4,500 for the hand dryers, and then I, um, that, and then rounded that up to 20, and then added 15 for clocks and intercom okay. to get to 35. Thank you. 15.
Um, the one thing that I would like to ask, when, when you meet with the town EMS uh, uh, emergency coordinator, that it's at some point you meet with them every year, I know that, um, to, to just bring this list with you because um, sure. They have avail grant availability right. for some of this stuff, and because yes. we're the emergency designated for the town, um, in the past they've gotten grants for, for I forget one of the things that they that they got grants to. They gave us um, the emergency generator when we had the problem with it. Right. And that was the other thing I was thinking, Phil, about the dual air conditioners. That if because this is the emergency shelter, if they ever they ever needed That's a true. cooling place for the residents. This would absolutely, with two, be a cooling center if, if the residents needed that during a heat wave in the summer. That's true. Suppose and then if you have two, one's, one can be a backup to the other. And right, you don't have to run the two continuously. The other. It might be more energy efficient because we would that's a huge one. If we got two small ones, we may only have to run the one small one. And then run the second one if it's you know a very hot day or there's something happening on both sides of the room. <coughs> I personally think these are all good things to ask for, for from our stabilization. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I would. Do, I don't think we really. Have I mean, to it's vote nothing. On it just point, frill. It? It's necessary. First, we have to find out if there's any special town meeting. Right. Well, you could take a vote. Um, you could you could make a motion to have the um, administration submit a warrant article to the town of Conway for a special town or annual town to use utilize thirty five thousand. Because we're then I'm going to ask you how much do you want for the stabilization? Because I want to get those into um, the town administrator. So uh, if I have to do I have to do the annual one anyway, so we might as well do them both tonight. Mm -hmm. Why don't you take over as chair? Oh, thanks. <laughs> you are the chair, so go ahead. Um, so you want to vote on that? Or do you want us to discuss the stabilization number now? Well, if, if I could ask that that particular thing, maybe we'd be better off tabling that because um, in the past we have asked the selectmen directly um, about what their opinion was before we decided on that um, because that... And, and because they believe in that, that's one thing that they're strong believers in. That's true. Just, and um, is that? I mean, I'm, you're looking at me like you don't agree with me. Well, but I think we still have to make a proposal, and then um, how, well, how we've done it in the past is we we've, we've put forward an article and then um, met with them and discussed it. We can always still change our article. What okay. did we do last year? Sounds good. Fifty, didn't we? Fifty thousand. We've been doing fifty a year, yeah. haven't we? So let's table my request for a table and go with Jan's idea. <laughs> Can you repeat that? <laughs> so, so fifty thousand dollars for, for we'll ask for select stabilization at annual town meeting. At annual town meeting, and then that's and that is targeted that we're going to need a new what, boiler, heating system, etc. in the next. That's for the long range. That's the long range plan. plans. And then uh, $35,000 uh, for these to updates. To remove from stabilization, right? Right. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> and what are we calling um, these current, um, these uh, immediate facility needs or current upgrades or how would you like to put that? Uh, like immediate facility needs. Great, thank you. The, the thing with the article is you always want to try and make it as generic as you can mm -hmm. so that um, things can fit in. So if you, you know, if you say to buy equipment, then you're stuck with equipment. So well, we could always attach the we could we could attach the list. The, the proposed the proposed projects are as such. Right. I'm sure they're going to ask us for more um, detail than just to withdraw thirty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Well, yes, but and uh, that comes up in discussion. But when you actually compose the article, you leave, you leave that pretty generic, mm -hmm. so that if say one of these items comes in at half the price of uh, what it was, we could always substitute for another gotcha. on the coming list. Okay. 
So we don't want to stick ourselves to this list if we don't have to. So uh, could I ask that you, if you want to type something up and send it to me, then I'll put it on the form and send it to the... <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can use minister. the one similar to what we used before. That worked well for okay. us. The same, pretty much the same article. And well, we, I've never been here when we removed money. Yes, you have. Okay. Or it actually wasn't removing money, it was raising. We, we asked for money for, from taxation. It right. wasn't removing from stabilization, so. Well, we can work together. Okay, great. That would be very helpful. Thank you, Jim. What is testing the oil tank? Well, we've got several. We've, we've got underground oil storage here. Yeah. And it's just something in a couple of the schools where we've, you know, we've got the, the tank down there is is in a bunker. It's not actually buried. It's in pretty good shape. But I would eventually like to bring somebody in to, to, to do some testing on it, just to make sure um, that the tank is in good shape. How do they do that? Like try to poke a hole in it? And no. If they, it they, works, they, they, <laughs> then you know you know, need they, a new one. <laughs> most gas stations that are still using underground gas tanks, mm -hmm. have, you know, they have some pretty sophisticated testing equipment. Um, that oh, they'll like come in with and, and just te test the tank to make sure that it's interesting. Because you know the last thing we want to do is is I have mess no down either. there that we have to pump out and yeah. clean up. So that gets very. From my perspective, it quickly. would probably be money well spent. Um, uh, and it, it's not as serious here. Like at the high school, we've got a berry tank. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping we can do do some testing on that too at some point. It's just it's a in my opinion it's a prudent investment as opposed yeah. to dealing with a mess. Right. And and there are, you know, you've got the oil tank here, um, and we've got a well here, and we've got septic system here. So and all of those things are things that are hard to get a look at and right. hard to predict right. if there's going to be problems. So having the stabilization fund that you have is a really good idea in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a question? Uh, Superintendent and I have been contacted by a gentleman at the FERCOG um, who asked us that, who, who informed us that the town of Conway, he's working with them to establish a five-year capital plan, and would we have some input into that? So with your permission, I would like to send that gentleman this list. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. You're all right with that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah is there... Um, it, I would just ask Bob, is this, this, is this all, like for something like that, to have preliminary numbers next to these would be more useful? I already told him that we don't have numbers and he understands that. Oh, okay. And I, okay. I, I really, I've got numbers to most of these. Yeah. I'm always loath to put them out because it's very difficult to get the numbers. Right. And you once you put a number out there, it gets a life of its own. Yeah. Bro um, broad ranges? Project. Broad ranges stuff? <laughs> you could do broad well, ranges with from safety. The might do that. That might yeah. be what they're trying, that maybe that's what the town did uh, you know, engage them for. So, so do we want a motion for this? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me, all right. I think you already did it, didn't you? I have a motion to have the administration submit an article to the town of Conway to add to the stabilization fund $50,000 at annual town meeting for long range, re long range plans. Who was making that motion? And, so then, and then I, okay. Second. All right. Jan, Elaine. All right. Let's go. Discussion? All in no. favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> we already <did> Unanimous. <laughs> We've discussed this over years. Yeah. Like this is, we know this is our plan and we're getting ahead of it. So. All right. Motion to have the administration submit an article to remove $35,000 from the stabilization fund for immediate facility needs. So moved. Second. You take All in favor? Aye. 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 Patty, over and above the $12,000 for the intercoms, what were the things that were added to the list to bring it up to the thirty five? dollars Hand dryers. The, the 4500 for the hand dryers. Okay. I'll, I'll amend this and send it to you. Air con two air conditioners. And two air conditioners. And the intercom. Yep. He's yeah. That's okay. the 15. And then there was a new motion about the front line. Oh, now we don't need a motion. I just, I'm just, they don't, I'm just getting their permission. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much, Bob, for all your hard work. Stay warm out there.
we are really. You want to start eight cars while you have out there? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my keys are optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> We're running him ragged. <laughs> I think yeah. they're good to move. Oh. No, not, not ragged. Um, he's, not yet. He's been doing, you know, everything has been planned out. I think oh, Ira can help speak to that too. Everything's been planned out really well, and we're getting there. Cool. Yeah, we're excited. I, Great. I just love being around the kids. I'm That's excited awesome. to get back to school. Cool. Um, was that our only unfinished business? That was new. Yeah, that was under no. So we, oh, we, we went out of order. Under, yeah, we went out of order. So gotcha. now we would go back to the school and Long range plan. facilities. But now I'm going to ask you if I could do my things before Kristen does her school improvement plan. So I oh, geez, everybody's I have a previous just bumping engagement this all evening. around. Does it yes. require a basketball game or something? But go oh, ahead. 18th birthday and a basketball game. All righty. <laughs> go right ahead. Which would you like first? Okay, so I gave you a printout this evening uh, uh, regarding where our, our school lunch is and uh, the headings fell off. So that first column is 14, 15, no, 15, 16, and then this is 17. This what? would be 17. It looks like this. I pass them around. Oh, I think Ira has them for you. Yeah, Ira, you're a good passer. There you go. Everything's getting log jammed at Ira. It's in the corner. It's just, yeah. it's where it's colliding. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you look down um, on the last uh, group of numbers where underneath it says free lunch price, the federal government gives us right now $2.78 for a lunch. And go back up to the top for paid lunch price, we only charge two seventy five. Mm -hmm. We're not allowed to do that. We're not allowed to charge less than what the feds are giving us. Didn't we already talk about this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was a, a kind of a notification. Oh, so okay. It the vote on. All right. So what we're recommending is that we do a 10% a ten cent increase um, as of January 1st um, to cover us for at least two to three years without having to do another price increase. I just have a question, not knowing um, the population as well yet. Um, is it a short notice for people? It is kind of a short notice, but this is the federal government and they notify us late, so by the time we get it on the agenda. No, no, I don't mean by who, I just mean, you know, our parents. Well, parents you could do a fur, if you wanted to defer it till February, that I would not yeah, have this an is an actual that. Christmas present that we would be sending. If you deferred it till February, I wouldn't have a problem. They are coming to audit, so just as long as it's voted and they know it's going to be implemented. I mean, do you, if, they, if, you, if you do this now and you announce it takes place January 1st and it's Christmas mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. yeah, we have to do that. that. So just to let you know that um, I will have to find... I know, but it might really be to not. somebody. No? I would have to qualify for... Yeah, that's true. I'm going to have to, if we vote this February 1st, I'm going to have to, and even if you vote it January 1st, we have to find in the budget the three cents for all the lunches we've already served. So we've got to retroactively. How much is that? Back to where? September. Back to September, for whenever our first day of lunch service. Oh. When did they tell you? Uh, I think in October. Is so, when the well, we go back to there. If we're not told, how can we be responsible for it? It's because we should. Well, known. how are you going to know if it's not? If we're not, not informed. To lunch. I don't know. It was published on page four thousand three hundred twenty-seven of the Federal <laughs> Register. Weren't you reading? Just to let you know, but we weren't notified. Ah. The, uh, the town just got their audit back, and we were um, written up on this lunch deficit. This lunch deficit. So, no, now we're going to be more deficit because we're paying three cents a lunch. I didn't no. know we had a deficit. I didn't either. I thought the school yeah. broke even. No, I, I, I don't have my computer, but we, we fixed the lunch deficit the year before. And then this year, I think we made like four hundred dollars. Maybe our account hasn't adjusted for it. Yeah, yeah. we should look into that. Because we can it, respond to you know it wasn't right. a serious thing. It was just a recommendation. That okay. Came because out. I know one thing that we run into is that the June reimbursement doesn't come till like July fourth mm -hmm. and or fifth. And I say we're well, on modified accrual. They should be accruing that revenue in there, and, and the FERCOG accountants don't like to do that. But it seems to me we've earned it. <laughs> we know it's coming. Why can't they accrue that revenue? And then we wouldn't be in the deficit. Okay. But I will check with Joyce. I will yeah. get a new ledger from Joyce. 
All right, so what do we want to do with this team? 50 cents a week, $2 a month. I don't know. Who am I to say that's too little or too much? You know? Do we want to go to February or do we want to go in January? February is no extra hassle. Well, we still right. have we have to reimburse for three oh. cents for every lunch. If, if you're going to do work. public announcements before Christmas about this, then it def it doesn't matter if it's January first or February first. It, it, that's the still, bummer news. Th is it's there. the bummer Christmas news. If you're going to wait till after Christmas to give the news, then say February first. But that's I don't know how that works. But if you're going to send it out now, that's a bummer anyway. Right. <clears throat> Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, right? Let's just send it out. A New Do Year's it. resolution of making lunch at home. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think it's too, a lot to just take care of it. Yeah. Uh, That's probably the best advice, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, it causes less hassle to have to retroactively pay back yeah. three cents at lunch, right, Pat? The sooner it's done, the better. Well, that is the most fiscally prudent thing to do. All right. Fiscal prudence. I'm always so up for that. All in favor of raising the lunch to ten cents starting well, January third. Is that when we go back? Yes. Yes. Twenty seventeen. One one. It's just easier. One one. So, so moved. Ira's the 80 bad 80 guy. 80. Okay. Second, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Phil second. I'm the lunch, I'm the lunch Grinch. Give me a shirt. <laughs> Phil was right. the second. Yeah. All in favor? All right. <laughs> Thank you. Do the adults? Does the adult lunch go up too? Mm, um, well, I, I yeah. Well, we could do that in June. Yeah. All right. I you guess our business to. manager wants to give us our financial report. I already did. Oh. So, um, so I have two, uh, the bus memo that I sent to you. Okay. Um, other school, other co couple other sc uh, school committees were asking about our bus safety procedure. So I um, talked with our provider who is Gripso, Gripco LLC. Yeah. And uh, since June of 2010, every driver has to undergo 60 hours of safety training to get their license. And annually, they have to get eight hours to renew because their licenses are, are renewed annually. Gripco has two certified trainers on staff who provide that eight hours of training for their drivers. In addition to that, we, as the district, meet with our drivers before the beginning of every school year, and we give them um, the updates on the bullying curriculum. And one of our school nurses gives them um, some basic first aid training, how to um, give an epi, how to administer an EpiPen, that kind of thing. Uh, for the first time this year, uh, this past Friday at Frontier Regional, the Massachusetts State Police, uh, headed by Sergeant Carmichael, gave our drivers a. Um, presentation on uh, bus security how to keep all you know how to identify a threat and, and keep you know children safe and things like that and it went very well and it was very well received by our drivers um, and that is what we do to keep our kids safe this is because the Plainfield accident um, I think some of the other committees were asking about what we do for safety um, because of that and there was also nationally there was another tra bus tragedy so yeah. it's just been on people's minds that was awful yeah so we just wanted to bring to you that our drivers are doing everything they can to keep our kids safe and um, I don't I don't think we do everything we can to keep our kids safe on at buses all. yeah at all the entire system of busing is unsafe that we do entire from stem to stern mm -hmm. we're still the most the bus transportation is still the safest mode of transportation it has the highest ratings of safety M more than auto plane bus safe the bus transportation is the safest right but that's crazy but bus accidents are responsible for nine and a half out of ten student fatalities every year in our country and in the past five years we've had one in one neighboring district and another in another neighboring district and and uh, um, I mean, it's, it's you know it's freak it's, accidents are gonna happen and that's my that's my like Which general philosophy sad. towards gun violence and, and, and yet we look how much effort and, and money and expense that we we 
we, we, we gear up for gun violence in the school. Um, and that hasn't killed any of kids in our neighboring districts in the Not past yet. five years. Not yet. But what has killed kids, we still have like an entire system that like the outrage is just in our culture just doesn't like to pay drivers more, to have seat belts, to insist on like the proven steps that like are needed to keep like alertness and all these other things. Well, seat belts are still very controversial. You've got half the people saying that they should have them, and half the people saying in an emergency those kids are going to be stuck in their seats with seat belts, and that's a problem. You One know? of the so things that came out is like the, the list of states that have seat belts and buses are also and pay their their drivers more are the ones that have to few it and and like the what I was amazed to see is the safest buses in the country are Texas they pay the drivers more I couldn't believe that and they have seat and they require seat belts in Texas we don't they probably can carry an Uzi too that's probably true that's probably true but I always hate it when Texas why does is, anything why is there a section that says buses may carry small arms ammunition labeled ORMD what is that because that's for any bus not just this is you know I, I I don't know what bus would carry arms but it's not a school bus so it's an interesting bus safety thing it is it's that's really, put out by the Commonwealth there's very little that we can do on our little own oh, it is. Okay. self but um, we do what we can I guess but, I mean, um, I always think it's crazy to have those huge buses running around when, a, like, a half a bus half the size makes more sense. And it, there's so much safety. It's the smaller, cool. with the bigger oh, wheelbase, yeah, you can't choice. see when you're running I know. your kid over. That was the whole problem of it, too. I know. That's just, that makes no sense it to me. It doesn't make sense to me either. You know, I mean, you, the bus come, Clayton sometimes, like, the only one on the bus uh -huh. from, like, Roaring Brook to here, you know, and it's like... Yeah. I think the How most important bus? safety is measure is the coordination between the highway department and the buses, you know, because we have probably the most unusual roads mm -hmm. around, and when you have those flash snowstorms, and I, and I have to hand it to the highway department, they're out there sanding mm -hmm. beforehand. I and think. They, they call, when we yeah. do get stuck, yeah. Ira, we call them on their cell phone, and they get right to wherever Leonard's buses are stuck, and they, they get us out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm on the phone with them, and any, any any threat or any idea of any kind of inclement weather, 4 a.m., we're all talking to each other. Last Sunday night, we were 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I was with George and Kevin and Keith and Ron, and, you know, just FYI, you know, get ready. And sure enough, 419, you know, we were talking to me. I liked that proactive approach that you had. That, that was great. Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. thanks. Yeah, and I think I, I know. Um, I guess you I, last year or a couple years ago, the com education commissioner was scheduling um, monthly teleconferences with superintendents. I don't know if Mitchell Chester is still doing that, or if you've gotten to be on his list yet, or whatever. But I know that when Marty um, had an opportunity to talk to him on one of those things, that was when uh, a couple of the rural superintendents asked him about waivers of the for rural districts of the bus size requirement and um, I think he was not open to that at all but that would be something to, to, to work on too that that is that, that they're big that way because by law they have to be because that's how many are eligible well, especially to ride as we're gonna have to be renewing with a potentially new company the next time we renew this. I mean, well, Lenny said he's not doing it in another contract. No, he no he's, yeah, his son. Yeah, he changed his Oh, he mind. did? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, he's still in the game. Okay. And, you know, and it's, I know it doesn't, safety is much more important than, um, than money, but just understand that um, compared to what other districts pay, oh, yeah, we, we our, our busing costs are pretty reasonable. It's killing and Mohawk. I, it's I literally understand, killing Mohawk. I do understand about the smaller buses, but again, that would that cost would be borne to us if we asked Mr. Gripko to go out and buy smaller buses. Right. Because he'd have to pass that cost on to us. But but I could I, I no, do it would be nice if over time he like needs as to he think replaces about his buses. Then maybe he, he doesn't get buy. a seventy five. Because right. we, are, we just don't have the kids anymore. You right. know? Um, so he, he needs to think about his fleet. Right. Um, but if you remember correctly, when we went out to bid the last time, he was several hundreds of thousands of dollars less than the Absolutely. only other bus company that bid us. Right. So I do. That's why I was uh, worried because he had right. said it was the last one. But he said it might, but now he. I don't think so. Okay. So much All right. Well, that's good.
Um, Anything so, else before you hit the road? I do. I have one more thing. Um, tonight, we're going to be asking the chair to sign a memorandum of agreement to the instructional IA contract. Uh, and what occurred is in this past negotiation, the IAs negotiated a stipended hour if they perform specialized duties or work in specialized programs. And the wording in the article that was written in the contract said it was up to the superintendent's discretion. Well, the Franklin County Retirement Board does not allow discretionary wages to be pensionable to our employees. And I had conversations with them and said it's not the wages that are discretionary, it's who earns them that's discretionary. And they said, well, that's nice that that was your intent, but that's not how it's written. So we worked with our attorney in the Franklin County um, Retirement, and we came up with some new language. Because if we're going to be paying these wages, we want them to be pensionable to our employees so that they're counted in their retirement allocation when they retire. I, I couldn't figure out. I wish I would have known that that was the purpose behind that when I read that the first time. Then I better read that again. Yeah, thanks. That makes sense, actually. I've got the original. Whereas before, when I read this, I could not figure out what was the going problem. on. <laughs> the way it was written before, it sounded like the wages were discretionary, and that's not the that's not the point. The point is, is that. The superintendent would uh, decide which programs, which students are specialized. So, and and, so, and the union and, and I, the president of the union and I, have agreed that. He's excellent. Well done. Uh, instructional assistants working in substantially separate programs, where the student is 60 60 percent out of of the of that child's day is out of the classroom, that that person gets an extra hour a day's pay because of the specialized duties. Or if the child has um, is a medically fragile child that has extreme medical conditions that uh, the IA has to have special training for to be able to handle those. So those are the people that get this, the extra half the extra hour pay a day. We want those to be retirement uh, ready. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And uh, so we just wanted to change a little bit of wording yeah. so that the. Uh, did you both of these signed? Or no, no, okay. so that the county would allow us to be able to make sure you sign the original. This one is the this original. Looks, okay, yeah. great. And that's all I have unless somebody has any questions for me. I'll sign them both. I think we have to vote. I think that one is the original. Oh, yeah, you have to vote. Oh, yes, no. please vote. But you can sign it. Vote on the changing the language for the. Um, <coughs> The Union 38 Instructional Assistance um, Agreement. So moved. Thank you. Can I have a second? second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, people. I appreciate your patience. Yeah. Um, yeah, you need these. All right, Patty, next time we'll I see you, you'll be oh, my neighbor. I'll give them. To, um, oh, those are all to first here. Oh, oh. these have to be signed. I'll, I'll let you know when I'm not there if you want to use my office. Okay. <laughs> I'm no, I told him he can use mine. There you go. All right. Thank well, you. I'll get those. Two. Happy holidays, Do everybody. You want Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. 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 And it, you just, oh, I'm sorry. And, and Dr. Carey, if you would just take the payroll ones back for us tonight, that would be great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Have and a nice night. <laughs> I just love them to the, uh, Thank you very much. So, where are we now? Patty, oh, okay. unfinished um, business. School. What? Are you on? It is now time for our principal to go over the school improvement plan. We've asked her to wait until the last the school improvement plan and there were some updates you want to Yeah, yeah. never a problem to go at the end. Uh, so the school improvement plan, I added two things uh, that came out of our last meeting and that's under the first school student achievement, the last bullet to increase STEM activities such as robotics. We will be um, talking to uh, a dad who's interested in doing robotics here. So maybe we can start that after the first of the year. Our little kids are using the B-Bots right now. It's great, good programming, as well as other STEM activities. Um, Emily Tynan and Jeremy, um, are, they are working specifically with the Hitchcock Center to get more STEM activities in as well. So we added oh, that. Thank you. 
And then um, we added the social emotional learning goal. Um, it, in terms of really keeping data, uh, we're doing a survey, district wide survey, on the second step program um, in January. It'll go to students, um, staff, parents. So using that data and also really um, looking at application and our kids applying the skills that they were using in the classroom. And then I want to develop a, a team that takes a closer look at it. I mean, we all know doing a program is great, but the important part is that kids are implementing the strategies right. of the program. So um, I thought that was a great suggestion and something that we should definitely dive into. Um, we did a sociogram in one of the classrooms and found some really interesting dynamics that are, of course, the kids didn't know it was, you know, who would you like to work with, and, and found some really interesting dynamics um, that we want to dive into a little bit. Because the school is wonderful and so many pluses, but one thing that can be a plus but a little mm -hmm. bit cumbersome for the kids is that they're with the same kids for so many years, seven, sometimes nine years. And we're seeing some of those dynamics and watching those closely. Absolutely. And that sociogram really helped us see some of that. Mm -hmm. So we added that to the plan as well. Oh, great. Awesome. Questions? <coughs> thank you for adding those things. Sure, thank you. So do we need a vote on this? Accepting the school improvement? Yes, we do. So Great. moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Excellent. And then a uh, quick principal report. First of all, my my sincere apologies. I'm horrified. You know how you do a report and you save it, save A, and then you save it under principal's report B, and <laughs> I guess I didn't print out the final because I have found 10 tables. Oh, jeez. So I apologize. <laughs> I'd like to email you a clean copy because this will bother me. Um, so our school improvement plan we did, did SU Bumpus, uh, through community counselor grant, has been with us since mid-November. Um, he's doing a residency with our students, uh, working on folk tales, learning about reading, writing, creating, art, and a final culmination, which will be next Tuesday at 1.40. It's been a really great experience for the kids, very rich. Um, the only... Um, recommendation that I would make if we did it again is it was really jammed into like six or seven weeks so the kids are the older kids are feeling a little stressed getting projects done and getting ready so to spread it out a little more but it was great he wrote the grant we signed it um, I know he's been in the school in the past and he's done some of this work um, and so he will be uh, will be ending with him next Tuesday um, PTO, we're really having a problem with PTO, and so the January newsletter will inform parents that the PTO may need to be disbanded. Um, currently, we have a president, and that's it. In the past two meetings I went to, um, and, and I'm not trying to criticize the president because she's been working really hard, I, I'm not comfortable. There's no agenda. There's no financial report. There's no minutes. There, there's all of those structures that you need to have a true PTO. Um, so I'm not, I'm not comfortable with the way that it's running right now. Um, there's no bank statements, or you know, you just there's nobody has a really good handle. And again, that's not to criticize the president because she sort of jumped in. Um, the PTO did a, a, a donation, and, and parents were great. So I think it's a matter of time. I really do. We now have a student activities fund set up, and we have some parents that are happy to do fundraising. Uh, Tori DeMeo just did two great fundraisers for us. Um, but they don't want to take on the role of secretary or treasurer. So we can still continue fundraising and do it, do it through um, the student activities account. But as it's running right now, I will tell you that I'm very uncomfortable. If, if Department of Revenue should come in, which that I've seen that happen before. Mm -hmm. Or if someone should audit our records or minutes or whatever, I I just I'm just very nervous about. You got to make a change then. Yeah. You can't. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I, I, PTO was like, it was just a few years ago. That was a happening thing. There was everybody was in it. There was monthly stuff. There was dancing. There was you know movie. Every you know PTO was like a thing. 
Yeah, and, and parents are involved, getting whatever we ask them to get involved, we have great involvement. I don't know if... There's playground just a few years ago. It's a PTO yeah, playground. I don't know if people... Do people show up for special projects yes, and give money, but they do. aside from Tori, who, yeah, she jumped in and is doing it all herself, people don't show up to meetings. Right, know? but if we it's need bigger. help, people right. are right there. Right. But mm -hmm. it's... It's, um, a there, used to be a, yeah. there used to be a teacher that was a yeah, we used to, right, and that was that was really the heart. And, I mean, we've had teachers. We've had more teachers at some meetings than parents. We've had like, three teachers and mm -hmm. the president and one other parent. Um, the president is adamant that the meetings are at three thirty um, because that fits her schedule, and I, I worry that that's um, not bringing parents in. And also, yeah, like you said, Ira, uh, parents will help with anything we yeah. ask. It's just a commitment to meetings. Mm -hmm. But like I said, as it's right now, I'm, I'm not comfortable with that. Yeah. I, I think we should continue to constantly yeah. explore it. But yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I've approached parents who, who have helped. You know, we have a parent that's doing the box, and she does all the accounting and all that, which would be interesting, meeting treasure. People just, they're, they don't. I mean, maybe a, a good way to spark renewed interest would be to have a school-wide election for president for PTO. So we uh, we had a, um, I, I was adamant that this was going to be a big night. We were offering pizza and child care and uh, free homework passes and you name it, we were offering. And we had, and I, I was crying and crushed. We had, I think, three parents and three mm -hmm. teachers. Yeah, I was yeah. <laughs> And I kept saying, okay, no, it's really just something ha I don't know what happened at the end of last year, but some folks got turned off. And I do think we have to bring it back, but maybe there needs to be a little a space in between. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe I, we've got to really pinpoint some of those key parents, including the current president, who could mm -hmm. bring it back to life. But I, mm -hmm. think, I think there needs to be a little break. Because some of the people that were very active, when I, I approached them, ah, not right now, per se, you know, no, no, no. So, but I'll, I'll help in any other way is the right. response. So I just want to keep you updated on that because um, our professional development days. Well, I was going to talk about ours tomorrow, um, but we won't be having we won't be having our early release, no. so, if, which is understandable. You know, with the two hour delay, we won't have early release. Makes sense. Yeah. The question yeah. is, will will we cancel or will we have a two hour? The sun will come out at 8, but how long will it take, and how does the wind play into that? Mm -hmm. And so. Hopefully a two-hour delay. Yeah. Oh, is that what the message I got from yes. here earlier? <laughs> yeah. I just, I, well, it's your report. No, no, go ahead. I just Always feel that um, for parents, you know, we want, we, you know, we want to be transparent, too, and I want them to know that this is what I'm thinking of and what I'm dealing it's with. Fabulous. So parents, A, all right, we know it's going to be a two-hour delay. It could be a cancellation, but at least we have that two-hour delay that, that we're, we're pretty positive. I really think that. they are appreciative of yes. the earlier, the better. Oh, no, I, I think it's agree. great. I it, it changes it the whole evening for families. an ability to plan. Yeah, yeah right. and right. it's great. Right. It would it, yeah. be very hard to be a parent, especially younger kids, mm -hmm. you know, not knowing until they get a call right. at 6 or 6.30. Yeah. Well, it goes both ways when you're also like planning on a snow day mm -hmm. and you like have that whole mentality and then something doesn't happen and it's just like, mm, you know, so, but usually, you know, weather reports usually And, and are I apologize right and that's why my phones are here because the <laughs> other, here's one, um, uh, this is from Franklin County Tech, uh, the, the co superintendents and I, Nine local superintendents and myself have been going back and forth since I think it was noon <laughs> today. <laughs> zing, zing, noon today, and so that's over I, temperatures or yeah, what, what precipitation? Do, no, what will we do tomorrow with the wind chill? And they did research back. It was January eighth, two thousand fifteen, was the last time they closed school because of cold. Cold, and then how many minutes? You know, if if it feels like twenty four. You know, but the wind chill is 24. It takes less than 10 minutes to get frostbite if we have a, kid, a child out there. So we're going back and forth with all these different scenarios. And, and the amount of time, effort, and thought that goes into deciding whether it's going to be a snow day, a, you know, a, a delay, or, or do nothing, 
it's tremendous because yeah. it's going to impact every student and every family. And, and for me, it's not even, you know, if somebody doesn't like my, you know, the decision right. I make, but it's more if I don't make the right decision in a child. You're going to get, yeah, you're going to get called. So, that's why I gave you that study, so you can just show the yes, parent that and just right. say, you know, we, 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 we go by data. We're data-driven. Here it is. A lot but of people it, love knowing ahead of time. And, and and, yeah. It's a little more complicated because tomorrow would have been an early release. But if we go in two hours late and then we early release at 1.30, it, it won't be considered a school day. Right. So I might as well just keep everybody home, ask the teachers to come in, and they can you know, they can be really? all day. <laughs> well, I wouldn't. I, yeah, I that's too that. complicated. Yeah. No, that's way too complicated. So, um, to Some of those districts are going to have worse weather than us, though. I mean, we're never going to be as bad as Mohawk, usually. No, and, and, and Franklin County Tech, he's got, what, nine districts or something he's working with? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, it's... It, it's, a, it, it's, well, it's a big decision. You can bring back the blizzard bag idea. You know about those, right? Well, yes. Oh, orange. you do. You work yeah, in I New do. Hampshire. Yes, yes. yes. And orange is, is actually yeah, the orange is there. Is I brought yeah. it up years ago there. because my sister works in a district in Hampstead, New oh, Hampshire. Oh, yeah, yeah. Beautiful place. And they have Great blizzard bags. And I said, what are blizzard bags? Yeah. And I brought it to school committee, but nobody had had it approved by DESE yet mm -hmm. in, this, wow. in Massachusetts. But now, since I, I have heard some, and I know uh, uh, somebody I know is trying to bring it into Huntington, which has crazy yeah, yeah. weather and hills, and so I what definitely exactly think it's... I've never even heard of a blizzard. You basically can count as a school day. You have pre-assigned or internet work done at home, and if people don't have internet access, you have other options for them. Oh, yeah. So it counts as a school day. I but heard teacher, some negative comments about that. At the, at the orange thing. is piloting It's a slippery, a slippery slope. Yeah, that's because they haven't really immersed themselves in it. And another good part a slippery, is... The, if the con, no, a slippery, like that. there's a, a reluctance to admit to the concept, to, to engage with the concept, that a feeling that it's a slip, that the concept itself is a slippery yeah, slope. Yeah, until you have kids going to school till July and you don't have air-conditioned schools, mm -hmm. and then you're blowing out your school budget to put air-conditioning in every school, and you have global warming. So talk about that slippery slope. Mm -hmm. So I think they might want to look at blizzard bags. The other part of the blizzard bag idea, which is great, is that teachers need to be available via phone until a certain time, noon or one o'clock, whatever, because it's a work day for them. Right. And so that's another piece of it that is really nice. Mm -hmm. So if kids have questions or they, you know. So did your district have it in New Hampshire? No, we didn't have it. Oh. But um, I, we did have it. Conval had it, different districts had it, but I do know Orange is piloting it. The problem is, it, like for us, the teachers would be available on the internet, but today's winds were crazy. They yeah. were so crazy, especially at Christian Lane. Let me tell you, in that building, they're coming down the yeah. chimney. It was frightening. <laughs> it's but, your goodbye, Lynn. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> uh, Kristen just happened to be there. Yeah, the pigeons are getting blown yeah, down the chimney. That's exactly what was happening. And yeah. uh, so, anyhow, um, but. Uh, <laughs> If the wind, if the wires get down, then the teacher can't be connected with internet, and 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 or an ice storm when there's three days out be, due to ice storm and right. all the wires are down. I remember so, those days. Mm -hmm. And they they could easily happen, you know. Again, the, the weather's really having a mind of its own this year, so. Okay. We'll keep going though on that. Okay. That blizzard bag because. Yeah. It'll be an interesting endeavor. Maybe. Yeah, we'll see where we go. All right. No, so no. Oh, yeah, sorry about are that. are very appreciative about the notifying them early, so mm -hmm. that's great. I'm glad we talked about it. I'll put the reunification plan and crisis plan together. So one of my goals when I came on board was develop, to develop a crisis plan. And have just, um, Jim Carmichael has been um, fabulous. Uh, chief, you know, the chief has too. But we had um, Jim Carmichael and Andy Canada from the State Police Department came to a staff meeting to help us prepare for the possibility of a reunification plan. And then what does that mean? If you're oh, like I'm out sorry. there somewhere and you gotta re get gather up again? Yeah, yeah, and then how to get parents and kids uh, Oh connected. okay, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. So it was. um how to do that in the safest, you know, quickest way. And then our crisis team met at Frontier actually, um, out of the building for a day in 
November, uh, to, we really were starting from scratch for a crisis plan, and Jim Carmichael and another one of his colleagues were with us for the day, and we created a, a plan that I'm very proud of. We're going to tighten it up in January and fix the grammar and all that, and then I'll give it to the superintendent. But that'll be done in January, so everyone will have a comprehensive crisis plan, as well as a little cheat sheet, what do you do if severe weather occurs, or what do you do if there's a obviously a lockdown and um, you know a bottom threat things like that so uh, he's been he's been a fabulous help um, and those are helpful for substitutes that yeah, right. are new you know so the, the information would be right there kind of by the phone by the door um, you know whatever happens happens severe weather what do we do and oh a b c and bullets and our plan, plan includes everything from what if you have a runner you know, a child who runs from the school, um, you know, power outage, just all sorts of different things. Well, I think it's awesome you're doing that. Oh, that then in different situations where uh, those things really made could have made a difference or didn't make a difference, or like um, at Springfield's uh, High when the uh, adjustments counselor was murdered in the school. Yes. You know, they they were new in that school in the year, and they didn't know how to dial 911 from their phones in this room. Yes. Because but part of it was panic, but part of it is they needed a code out, and then, you know, and they just couldn't. But if you actually practiced that or knew that, you would be able to get out sooner, so they couldn't get, you know, even though right next door is a ambulance and EMT yeah. sitting right there but um, so unfortunately we've learned from others right I don't want to say but mistakes that, right but, you know, but just you know. that they were new they were not yeah. oriented to the building yes. yet you know it was you know they just didn't know their facility the way you would hope they would and when I took over at a residential program our crisis plan for evacuation which just cracked me up beyond was we were in Wendell it was to go to Long Island Oh my. <laughs> I'm like, that was that oh. was written. I'm like, let me tell you, <laughs> I'm in charge and there's no, no way, way I'm going to the to the the, the population no center yeah. if yeah. there's a crisis. Yeah. We're staying yeah. here. Right. You That's can right. come to Wendell right. where we will have like chickens and food right. to eat right. and you know, water that you can drink. That's We're right. not going That's to right. Long Island. But yeah. that was the written evacuation plan if there was something where we had to like, you know major disaster. I was like, I'm not doing it, so we need to rewrite it, because it was just, anyway, yes, yeah. load up the kids and take them to Long Island. <laughs> we had our, so we had our lockdown drill today, and the kids were awesome, from the three-year-olds to, the, I was kind of chuckling, because um, the, this isn't confidential, I wouldn't say anything confidential, because obviously our crisis plan is important to be confidential, but um, the new best practice is that you know, the kids are somewhere and, and the teacher has um, something that they could pretty much collaborate with the person. Well, let me tell you, no one is getting in Mr. Gifford's room. Because <laughs> he's standing there on the biggest piece of wood. I went to the Juma Carmichael and I said, okay, I'm never going to surprise him by in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> the staff, you know, takes it very seriously. Um, star behavior we're going to do a revisit on that in january we had a visit from charlene allen from frontier to our sixth grade um to discuss frontier how'd that go you know here's a problem there. i brought it up at our last principals i mean phil at our last principals meeting um we have kids right now in sixth grade that are applying to other schools mm -hmm. and our visit doesn't happen until february or so so i talked to darius about even starting it early. You keep saying that. Um, yeah. Because this has come up before. Yeah, kids are going to be making decisions, mm -hmm. and um, and Frontier has wonderful things to offer. And you know, I was talking to one student, great student, great kid, and she said, "Well, I, I just think Frontier is too big for me. I want her to go up and see how mm -hmm. it, it, it may be big, but you're in your classes and it's small and it doesn't feel big, and and so that's going to be one of my goals that we start that." That's good to hear. It's yeah. on our agenda for years and yeah. years and years. It's so, so important because the fear of the unknown that, you know, but once they know and they're more familiar, I'd love for them to visit three times, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. shadow a, shadow another student or mm -hmm. have lunch there and go to the some of the cool classes, you right. know, I mean, let's face it, it's all about selling our school, right? right? I mean, 
I can't believe the number of choices I sat in the meeting with a parent and they were talking us, to us about the things they were thinking for next year. Of course, Frontier being one of them, but they listed about five choices. I was like, choices. Four Rivers There's Academy so in Charlemont, PVPA, yeah. Stonely Burnham, Eagle Brook, the Mend, yeah. Center School. Center yeah. School. So, so, anyhow, Charlene did come and, and that was great, you know, but I'd like to keep that going. Four rivers she actually had high school students make a video of the high school or the, you know, the middle high school and just you know, bring around all the, you know. That's a cool idea. Yeah, yes. so she mm -hmm. showed that. We had talked uh, in September about, you know, her coming earlier and, and you know, uh, really talking to the kids about it. And then they got this great idea to do the, the DVD, the video. And I thought it, you know, was pretty well done. She yeah. should also bring a Conway kid or two with her. That's yeah, we've, in had, the past. we've had quite a few Conway ki uh, Frontier kids contact me who have come to, one is going to be doing some labs with some of the kids. He's in AP Chemistry and he's going to come back and do some labs. He's a senior at Frontier and he was a Conway kid. And we've had about three of those kids and I said, yes, that would be great. But you know what we started in my former district was we started in third grade. It was, it, like Conway, it was a lot of kids were into athletics, for example. So we gave the kids, um, it was who's at night. Uh, C.T. Funk at Hoosick night at the boys' basketball game, mm -hmm. and they got passes, and the boys' team, like, hung out with them later. It was like, the, so, like, since third grade, we had a program that Hoosick is your school, you <laughs> right? Know? In fourth grade, they went up, and they did some science experiments in the chemistry lab. So we programmed mm -hmm. them very early mm -hmm. that Hoosick is your school. That's mm -hmm. nice. So I'd like yeah. to, you know, start yeah, a little yeah. more of that. That is a great idea. And, and that, that's the option, you know, mm -hmm. so... Because let's face it, it's a lot of it is the kids and what they're it's comfortable perception. with. So, yeah. Yes, yes. So, um, While you're doing all of that, if you could always remember to remind them to come to town meeting. Come to town meeting? I don't the know kids? about that. No, the parents. Oh. When, oh. Whenever you interact with parents oh, in the okay. community, within the Thanks community, so. okay, how yeah. important it is to come to town meeting, okay. that supporting your school whether it's Frontier or Conway, mm -hmm. uh, means supporting your budget and being at the thing. And okay. that, especially in this day and age, we all have to be more political than ever. Yeah. Yeah. We okay. really do. And then two quick things. We had a craft night, which was great. And then we had an MCAS uh, conference call last week, which was very informative. Um, we'll be sharing information with the teachers about tech structure types of questions. It's going to be real, very rigorous. We found out that our third graders literally will have to type an essay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they'll have to go back between tabs, right. things that we need to teach them. Mm -hmm. At least they're telling us ahead of time we'll have a practice ex uh, test in January. But as Lynn has reported in the past, this is a good year to do it because it's a hell harmless year, so we can mm -hmm. work out all of the kinks. And and you know, for them to organize, there will be graphic organizers to help them organize their thoughts. There'll be scratch paper. They can actually write out the sentences and the frame of it. Um, it's an untimed test, so they can write it out longhand, and then they can, you know, type it in. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, we're not, there is a lot of processing, but they can do it the way they're comfortable with, and then do it like that. But then on the other hand, some of the kids I see are, you know, yeah, they could do this better than anybody. So yes, yeah. if they could do it on their iPhones, they yeah. could probably no, do that. That's it. it. And the last thing is, Desi will um, puts out this report card overview of our school. They do this every year. This was has to be sent home to parents and put on our website. It was um, our report card looks great. We want it to keep looking great. Yay, kind of like um, that's a fabulous staff. I really have. I really am living in paradise here, people. That's good. I really am. I like that. The kids are amazing. The staff is amazing. It's a great superintendent. It's a great school committee. I'm in paradise. We have our little issue. Of course we do. But right. No more, no different. That's right. Well, we have So again, saying. thank you. And our saying is? A bad day in Conway is... Better than a good, good day, day anywhere else. <laughs> That's what I say all the time. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. That's awesome. Even with pigeons coming down your yeah. chimney. <laughs> yes, even with pigeons coming down your chimney. <laughs> it, was, it was a little like, unnerving, but it was all, yeah. you know, we're, I'm, we're awesome.
means we can get the occupants of paradise to continue to come every year and vote to continue its existence. Well, they, they really appreciate their school, I yeah. think. I yeah. think they see what they get up for their money. And so. make a lot more babies and come. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere. So we could get beyond 15 be students. Well, 15 students is great, but we have to be sustainable. Yes. All right. Deerfield last year had the fewest live births in its history. Right. Right. Uh -huh. People are waiting longer, people are wanting less children. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I know it. It's my son's generation, both of them, and I keep yes. saying, are there any engagements uh, yes. for this Christmas? <laughs> you and me, too. Uh, we don't have a collaborative report because Ashley's out, and I don't go anymore, although I'm not sure they still know that. But it's Ashley, and I still get their emails, but I need to check. Um, and superintendent's report? I don't have a lot to say uh, because well, it's getting late, number one. But number two, outside of the fact that, again, the, the district is, is wonderful. It, it, there's, there's no words to describe how wonderful um, it is. Even our problems are so, they're just, they're, they're okay problems. They're things that we can certainly work with. Uh, I have dynamic um, administrative team, and the principal here is world class. You know that. And, and so, having said all that, um, a little bit thing about Frontier. I don't know if any of you were able to go to their uh, either their middle school winter concert or the high school winter concert or their last play. All phenomenal. All phenomenal. There's a play this weekend. I was looking at this. Like uh, was there? Elf or something? Oh, that's an outside. Oh, it's um, outside. Okay. It's actually it's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They were going to do a dress rehearsal for our students, and I don't know how that's going to arrange. Mm -hmm. I did talk with one principal, and I said maybe you know you can mention to them that we probably won't be there in the morning. Yeah. Uh, maybe they could change their timing on it. Mm -hmm. um, I was amazed. What really amazed me was between. Um, you know, Max Sherrill and the, the strings teacher, the kind of music they got out of the middle school. So even the middle school where they don't have as much experience, their music was tremendous, their singing was wonderful. Uh, it was very, it, the whole thing was wonderful. By the time they get to the high school, I thought I was watching a PBS concert. It was I that know. Crazy. I used to when I worked in Frontier, and I walked down the hallway, and I'm like, "Oh my God, they sound so good!" Oh, like, when I don't mean to interrupt, but I forgot because it just happened today. We had the best concert today. That's right. The best. I mean, I saw these kids who never played an instrument in their life, and we had the strings concert, mm -hmm. and then we had the band and the chorus. It was amazing. Oh, cool. Not just the music level, but. I had tears in my eyes. Kids had such confidence. They were like glowing. It was the, we have a great, great. Mm -hmm. And that new pick of uh, our new strings teacher is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. And that's Max's wife, the band teacher. So we're hoping, we're hoping oh, cool. we can keep him for quite a while. What's his name? Max Cheryl. He's great. And her name is Mary Jo. Really a neat guy. Yeah. What yeah. town do they live in? They moved from Ohio two years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know what. Uh, He's so thoroughly Midwestern, yeah. though. I think they live in Deer. I think they live in Deerfield. Too. Deerfield I don't know. Yeah. He's a yeah. very enthusiastic cool. guy. Yeah. He'll be marching down the halls with a mini band doing Christmas carols in front of classrooms probably That's next awesome. week. All these little extra things. Now, is there a concert next week too, or was that today the concert? No, so today oh. was a concert, and what happened was Mary Jo said, "I'm going to send the flyer home." Like three weeks ago, I said, "Okay." Then I had a parent call me and say, "Is there a concert?" And then I realized she sent the flyer home with band kids. And I went to sixth grade yesterday. I said, "Is the chorus singing tomorrow?" <laughs> and they said, "Yeah, we are." So I had to do a quick hall call because I knew. I think sometimes people forget that I knew, and I didn't. It wasn't on the slip that chorus was performing, so it was quite a bit Because I had my phone that there's an all school saying next. Next, yes. Oh, there is. Okay. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Okay. 8.30? 8.45. Yeah. Okay. I put all right. on my calendar so for 8.30 <laughs> so I'd be on time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So sorry, Lenny. Yeah. just no, forgot that's about our No, that's fine. That's perfect. That's fine. It, and, and again, these are wonderful, wonderful memories and times in, in mm -hmm. Conway School and Frontier. Uh, great kids. Mm -hmm. uh, anyhow. Um, 
So the only real news that I have, of course, is the move, and we're we're becoming very excited about it. The, um, the I will tell you that Pioneer uh, Regional District, the Assistant Superintendent and Facilities Director, came to meet with Bob Lesko and myself. They wanted to see what things looked like before we moved in, and then they will come back in January after we're settled. There was another district very close by that spent a lot of money, um, an incredible amount of money. And I'm saying, well, we're trying to do it under 60000 We may. That's Pioneer. Pioneer spent an incredible amount of money. Well, not so much Pioneer, but they did move, and it was expensive. But they're losing their lease in J January, July, and they want to move back into, they want to move into the high school proper instead of the, the trailers that were really bad. But no, that's not the district I'm talking uh, about. But they did spend a lot of money to move out, and now they're moving back. Oh, my God. And then we're doing, we're, we've been able to, between Bob Lesko and my, um, you know, uh, relocation subcommittee, we've been able to really do it on the, the QT, the, the real low side. Like we're saying, we started out at 90, we've, we brought it down to 80, and I'm really thinking we're closer to 60. Uh, we found out that we could repurpose a lot of things, and well, she have that good shop there, right there, and the, they yes. could they could fix anything, yes. make anything for you. It's true, and they, um, they do amazing stuff. But um, um, Alan from um, Waitley has been helping out. He's quite a carpenter. Oh. So anyway, we're very very uh, fortunate, very excited, um, and uh, is everybody going into that building, or are you putting yes. people elsewhere? No. We have, we're using four classrooms. Okay. The three for the business and the special ed office on the far side. There's one um, old textiles room that really haven't been used for much. Mm -hmm. I think speech maybe has been in there. We're going to use that for our, our multi-purpose room, our meeting room, and things like that. And, and then um, uh, the original offices met for the middle school will be actually where Patty and I will be, and then Rhonda will be in the glass one so that was the you know when the school was designed that was the middle school entrance and so that would have been for the receptions for the middle school and then the principal or the assistant principal of the middle school and so that's where we're going to be and Bob has worked very hard and his men have worked really hard the movers are coming next Friday wow. um, the office has Friday and Monday off of the holiday weekend I'll be there on Friday and Monday to uh, just oversee and make sure they get everything and it goes in the right places. We have boxes like this. We've been putting together boxes. Uh, they, everything is taped with blue paint, taped with the name of the room it's going to. and So we've been very, very busy. But I think we're starting to get, well, I was always excited yeah. because I wanted to be with students. But right. I think my team, it took them six months to you know and now that we're a week away from it um i think they're they're starting to feel cool. you know some are a little ambivalence a lot of work well, but we're also doing a lot of purging i was going to say any any interesting discoveries in your yeah. packing up but i, I will there tell are. you louise law <laughs> had a room that was next to my office she and Rhonda went out and moved the dumpster to underneath her window lifted up the window literally literally filled it to the brim with just old, old, uh, <laughs> just old, she's been there for so long, just old books and stuff, old curriculum, things that we don't even teach anymore, you know, just stuff that had just piled up over yeah. there. So. God, that feels good. Yes. <laughs> yes, I said that. I said that at the, at the principal's meeting. I said. We used to that herself? Well, she has um, MJ oh, okay, okay, and, okay, and okay. Rhonda and everybody <laughs> okay. is sitting there tossing yeah. things out the window and <laughs> laughing. That's uh, awesome. Regina was visiting me, Regina Nash, and she was there listening to the laughter. And they she came to visit? <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's she, funny. Yeah, I've met with her a couple times. She's oh. great. Mm -hmm. So, um, but long story short, after we're settled in June, January, I'm sorry, I would like to put together the uh, building subcommittee again to discuss something, you know, a real action timeline and a plan for the Waitley Christian Lane building. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? 
you know, we're still going to keep it and match but for how long and what do we, you Get know, the fire department to, this probably be yeah. hazardous waste if they burnt it down. So, I don't know, you know, sometimes those controlled burns are great, but if, I don't, I honestly, I don't know. If there's asbestos all over the place, who knows. Right. But anyhow, um, we will be working on that. It's not something we're just going to leave, but we may leave it for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but Who actually owns the building? We do. We own the building. We, we don't own the land. Waitley owns the land. We bought the building for a dollar. Hmm. From Tim Underwood. Well, I am finding. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a. How can that be? A little story behind. Uh, but yeah. How can the land and building? Own the land belongs to the else? town, but the building is ours to to do what we wish. <laughs> Take responsibility yeah. for it. And they have the right exactly. of first. Exactly. <laughs> they have the right yeah, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. We can sell it back for a dollar. That's exactly right. Then they can have a nice building lot there. Which We're would actually be worth required to offer it to them for a dollar, I think. Mm -hmm. That'd be a nice building lot. That's a beautiful yeah. corner. Lynn's being very humble. I've been up there and I know people are excited, but there's been a lot some some meltdowns and Lynn's very calm. It'll work Perfect. out. We're gonna be exactly where we need to be. That's awesome. But it's, she's been, yeah, she's, yes, she's being humble about it. I, well, I, I, my, somebody said they're going to stitch it in a pillow. It'll all be fine. And, and I know this because I've lived it. You know, I was hired for my experience and my background. I've seen it, I've lived it, I know it. But it's hard when people Change have is done hard. the same and thing for 23 years in the same, in the same, same place. Same building. And, mm -hmm. and uh, then this new pipsqueak comes along yeah. and says, it'll be fine, right. it'll be fine. Right. But it will be. Right. It really will be. Yeah. I knew Even if it's not, it's still so much better. The first week you were there, the you're like, we are not staying in this building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not no, happening. No way. When I had the I tour of the basement, I'm like, mm, no, yeah. No. No. Come on down. I'll show you. Oh, I'll yeah. Come down into all the nooks and crannies. It's, yeah. it's just uh, not a pleasant place. No. So, so anyway, that's where we are today. Cool. So the only thing that I thought about um, while you were talking is just that uh, we were talking about the articles, Warren articles for the spe special town meeting. And the one for the central office, we just oh, that would be and, a and really should great should be put on that. Um, I will make sure so that way you get your air conditioning before you oh. right. And I will say, Waitley had their special town meeting, and they gave it to they gave us. There's right. a portion of money that was set aside for central office improvements. Yeah, I remember. However, mm -hmm. it's specifically stated for Christian Lane right. and not so it has to be revoted. Yeah, yeah. So we have to the, the, okay. they, the towns have to revote their portion, which is probably six thousand maybe for yeah. Conway. I think that's But Waitley has already approved it, and so we do have to go to special town meeting. Or, or we can wait to the regular town meetings. But I, um, if there's a special town meeting, do it then because we're, yes. you're going to have a lot in regular town meeting, especially yeah. if mm -hmm. Frontier ends up with yeah. capitalist sort yeah. of requests on there. Sort of. yeah. Good idea. Separate. Thank you. That's a great idea, Phil. Thank you so much. The only other thing I had is do you know about this, Jan? Um, the town. Uh, what's his title? Coordinator administrator? Tom Administrator mm -hmm. sent me, asked me if there's a chance I could bring up um, this. We are respectfully requesting that you consider joining city and county leaders across the country and officially recognizing January 22nd through 28th of 2017 as School Choice Week in Conway. Do you know about this? I do not. I'm sorry to say. Issuing a proclamation provides an opportunity to shine a positive light on the K through 12 education options available for children and families in Conway. No thanks. Last year, more than 240 county leaders, along with 33 governors and the United States Senate, issues issued proclamations recognizing National School Choice Week. Um, National School Choice Week is entirely non-political and non-partisan. We do not advocate for or against any legislation. Our goal is to raise awareness among parents of the K through 12 education options available for their children. Please let me know we be able to issue this proclamation. Well, yeah. If there's only one option, then we agree we're still. I do. I don't. I don't understand quite what they're doing. So they just want to make a National School Choice Day to make you week. aware. Week. Week. For, to raise awareness that you yeah. have options. And so what would be our obligation to that? I think he's asking us to say Conway is 
is a joining the group that's a group asking for a pro I don't proclamation. Know that. That's quite an assumption that we want to, well, we want to know a little bit more. Well, he just sent it to me today. Yeah. And since it happens before we meet again, is why he asked. Uh, I say we proclaim, be loyal to your soil. You're well, in Conway. You're in Conway. You go to school in Conway. That's great. Well, <laughs> basically that's, that's what he's what he saying did. is advertise that's how great true. Conway is so other people come here. That's what I saw. Today. We're marketing. Right. We're marketing Conway. Yeah. Suck that's the lifeblood out of the other towns nearby. We we're marketing that we participate in school choice. Choice. And that we are an option. There's the proclamation. Do you want me to read you the proclamation? Whereas all children in Conway should have access to the highest quality education possible, and whereas Conway recognizes an important role that an effective education plays in preparing all students in Conway to be successful adults, and whereas quality education is critically important to the economic vitality of Conway, and whereas is home to a variety of high quality public and non-public schools from which parents can choose for their children, in addition to families who educate their children in the home, and whereas education, ed educational variety may not, educational variety not only helps to diversify our economy, but also enhances the vibrancy of our community. And whereas Conway has many high quality teaching professionals in all types of school settings who are committed to educating our children. And whereas School Choice Week is celebrated across the country by millions of students, parents, educators, schools, and organizations to raise awareness of the need for effective educational options. Now, therefore, I, John O'Rourke, do hereby recognize January 22 through 28, 2017, as School Choice Week, and call a, 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 this observance the attention of all our citizens. Sounds like a charter school revolution. Oh, it does. Yeah. Sure. I'm sorry. I will so remain silent. So I guess we'll table that. Uh, maybe that's coming from the place of they 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 like the idea of us getting school choice. And, I think so. And whatever, but I don't know who's behind we, it or what. Can't we advertise more and get more school choice kids from the neighboring towns that so desperately need their own? So I'll say we read it, but yeah. didn't really have enough discussion time before right. the actual. Unlike we other don't schools, we're it. more a destination than a place that is exited from. Mm -hmm. However, yeah. Well, I, think, I did I my part. I raised it. Did. And did. Thank it. You. Okay. So we're good just letting it. I respect the intent to boost enrollment. I mean, I, if, if that was the intent, I respect mm -hmm. that. But to, to just join that proclamation, hearing that for the first time, it's too much to consider actually making a decision about. Oh, I'm with you. I'm not yeah. sure what we would even be considering. Yeah. yeah he just so, want, wants yeah. us our thumbs up or thumbs down, yeah. I think, on that we're part of this pro proclamation. Yeah. yeah. And we're just going to be neutral. Is that okay? We're like, don't have time to investigate the sources or whatever. Is that okay? Okay. There ain't Table. nothing apolitical after 2016. Yeah. Anything else? A vote to adjourn? Aye. Aye. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye.